In this Math 2203 video, we're going to take a look at inverse linear transformations. But it's going to be a little bit more than that. We're actually going to explore a bunch of different operations between linear transformations that we're allowed to do. So we'll take a look at how to add linear transformations together, how to scale or multiply um, a linear transformation, how to compose two linear transformations, and looking at the inverse of a linear transformation if it exists. So here's the motivational question. We have these linear transformations, and they're kind of like functions that we've seen from calculus already. And we already know that we can add, we can find inverses, we can compose functions under certain properties from our calculus courses. So it's natural for us to wonder if we can do these operations on linear transformations. The only thing is we have some restrictions on how we can do these operations on our linear transformations. So the following definition is just going to be kind of a framework for us to be able to perform these operations. If V and W are vector spaces, we're going to be considering the set of all linear transformations from V to W. And we're going to denote that as LIN V comma W or LIN VW. If V and W happen to be the same vector space, it's usually customary just to write LIN of V or LIN V instead of writing LIN V comma V. Okay, so let's start first with addition and scalar multiplication. So V and W are vector spaces and little v here is going to be an element inside the vector space V. If S and T are inside of that set of linear transformations from V to W, we can define addition and scalar multiplication in the following way. S plus T acting on V is going to be defined to be S acting on V plus T acting on V. For scalar multiplication, we're going to have KS acting on V is defined to be K times S acting on V. Let's take a look at some examples of the sum and scalar multiplication ideas. So here I'm going to start it out nice and easy. We're going to take some uh, transformations from R2 to R2. This S and T are going to be linear. Sorry that I haven't stated that in the example. You may just want to jot that down, that S and T are linear. And what we're going to do is we're going to determine S plus T and 2S. So let's start with s plus t of xy. By definition, this expression is equal to s of xy plus t of xy. And all I've done to move from here to here is I've filled in the definitions of those linear transformations. So s was given by this linear transformation and t was given by this linear transformation. And to finish up our answer, all we're going to do is form a final linear transformation with two components where we add this first component to this first component. So we'll get 3x plus 4x plus 7x. Negative y minus 2 more will be negative 3y. Move on to the second component. 2 and 8 gives us 10x. And we have negative 4 plus 5. That will be 1y. So here is our linear transformation s plus t. Secondly, let's deal with that scalar multiplication by a factor of 2. So what is 2s? What does that transformation look like? Well, by definition, we can rewrite this expression as 2 times s of xy. And of course, s of xy is given by this uh, expression right here. So all we're going to do is scale or multiply or distribute this 2 through to get our final linear transformation, 2s. The next example deals with different types of spaces. So we're going to take a look at linear transformations from the polynomial space P2 into the real vector space R3. So we're going to take two linear transformations given by the following maps, and we're going to, in this case, determine S plus T of a specific polynomial and 5S of a specific polynomial. So to start off our question, we're going to rewrite this expression as S of our given polynomial plus T of our given polynomial. That's how our addition of these two linear transformations is going to be defined. And next what we have to do is we have to evaluate S at this polynomial. What does S do? 
Well, S creates a vector in R3 where this is our A value, this is our B value, and this is our C value. So we end up with this vector 3, minus 1, and 7. The coefficients in front of the x squared, x, and our constant term just get mapped right into a nice vector in 3 space. And next we have to evaluate t at this given polynomial. What does t do? Well, t sends this coefficient to the front. So it's going to take this b and send it out here to the front. Then what it does is it takes our constant term, our c value, and we multiply it by 2. And that goes in the middle piece. And finally, our third component that we get is always equal to 0. So that's how t acts on this particular polynomial. And of course, to end off the question, we just have to do regular vector addition. So we'll get 3 minus 1, negative 1, plus 14, and 7, plus 0. So this vector in R3 is s plus t evaluated at this particular polynomial. The next thing we have to do is deal with that scalar multiplication. So what is 5s evaluated at this polynomial? Well, by definition, it's really just 5 times whatever we get when we send 4x minus 3 through the linear transformation s. So what do we get when we put this polynomial into s? Well, remember, all we do is we match up the coefficients in front of the x squared and the x. They become the first two components here. So our coefficient in front of the x squared is 0. Our coefficient in front of the x is 4. And our constant term is minus 3. And then we multiply that vector we get by 5. So our final answer here is going to be 0, 20, and negative 15. So the ideas here in theorem number 1 I've kind of alluded to in the last two examples. If V and W are vector spaces and S and T are linear transformations from V to W, then it's always going to be true that S plus T is a linear transformation and K times S is a linear transformation. We're going to prove this on one of the worksheets you'll see in class. Next we'll learn about composition of transformations. So as a definition here we'll take three vector spaces U, V, and W and we're going to let T and S be maps. So T maps from U to V and S maps from V to W. T and S may or may not be linear transformations in this definition. We define the composition of S with T as follows. S circle T of a given element of U is equal to S evaluated at T evaluated at U. So it's the same kind of idea that you have already seen for function composition. So let's take a look at an example of how to find the composition of to a linear transformation. So in this case, S and T will be linear transformations. We're going to define them in the following way. And what we want to do is we would like to determine S composed with T of A, where A is a general 2 by 2 matrix inside the, the vector space M22R. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to represent this A as a general 2 by 2 matrix inside M22R. So I'm going to have the components as A11, A12, A21, A22. Now we can go ahead and try to evaluate what this composition looks like. So I'm going to break apart this. I'm just going to rewrite this using the definition. It's S evaluated at T evaluated at A. So I've put our matrix A inside here. And what I want you to do is take a look at what T does. So if I put this 2 by 2 matrix into T, what happens? Well, T only requires two pieces of information from this matrix. It requires this one and this one. T is going to put this coefficient in front of an x squared. And T is going to put this as our constant term. So that's how we evaluate T of this matrix. And next up, we want to evaluate S of this polynomial. What does S do? Well, S is just going to take the coefficients of our polynomial 
and put it into a three vector. So it's going to take the coefficient here, x squared. There's no coefficient or coefficient of zero in front of the x. And finally, our constant term goes in that third component. What might be useful to jot down here is that the composition works in this direction. But just like functions, the opposite direction may not work. So just because S composed with T works, it exists and we can find it, doesn't mean that T composed with S is going to exist or work. In fact, if you go back and take a look, where does T map to? Well, T maps from M2 to R to our polynomial space. And where does S map from? S maps from our polynomial space to R3. So we have to have the order right. We have to have these two middle vector spaces line up. If we go to try to do the composition T composed with S, if we do S first, we start in a polynomial space and we end up in R3. And then when we move on to go evaluate at T, T expects us to input a matrix, but we have a vector in R3. So the composition T composed with S doesn't even exist. So just like you've seen for functions, it's not always true that these two compositions have to be the same. In fact, most of the time, they're not going to be equal. To end off this section on composition, I'm just going to give you an analogous theorem to what we saw earlier for addition and scalar multiplication. So, provided that S and T are linear transformations from their respective vector spaces, then when we go to find the composition, it's also going to be a linear transformation. So I just want to add in a little note on that last theorem. Uh, I just want to remark that this linear transformation T composed with S is actually a linear transformation from the vector space U all the way over to the vector space W. <clears throat> so remember that S was a linear transformation from U to V and T was a linear transformation from V to W. So this is kind of the reason why we care about composition. It gives us an alternate way or a shortcut way of moving from the vector space U all the way over to W without really having to deal with that intermediate vector space V.